Using cloud images along with cloud init is a great way to provision Linux machines in Proxmox. Cloud init is a standard Linux package that helps take care of the initialization of a virtual machine instance. When using cloud init, you can configure your network settings and your SSH keys so that when your machine starts up for the first time, it has the right settings. And cloud images are minimal, customized images of Linux that are meant to run in public clouds. Most of these images, like the ones from Ubuntu, are certified and optimized to run in public clouds like AWS, Google, Azure, OpenStack, and more. And these cloud images already have cloud init on them, just waiting to be configured. And the good news is that Proxmox uses these too. So today, we're gonna configure a virtual machine on Proxmox to use a cloud image. We're going to configure cloud init on that machine, giving us the flexibility to bootstrap these machines with our settings before they're created. And then we'll turn this machine into a template, creating an easy way to provision new machines with our network settings, SSH keys, and more and without the need of cleaning up things afterwards. And we'll do all this in just a couple of minutes. So to create our Ubuntu cloud image, the first thing we'll need to do is download the Ubuntu cloud image. We can download this from the repository. Now I'm gonna download the focal image or the current LTS, but feel free to download any one you like. Once you're inside of this folder, you'll wanna find the one labeled focal server cloud image amd64.img. Now, instead of downloading this, you'll wanna actually copy the link to the download to your clipboard because we need to do this inside of a terminal. Now, this might not make sense right now, but we're actually going to use this image as a hard drive for our virtual machine. Then you'll wanna SSH into your Proxmox server. Once you're in your server, we'll download the image with wget. Next, we'll run a command to create a virtual machine. And the reason why we're doing this is so we can attach that image we just downloaded to this virtual machine. Then we'll go back to the GUI. So the command we're gonna run is QM create 8000. So 8000 is an ID. You can pick any ID you want, but I'm gonna pick a high ID so I can identify this for when we use it as a template later. We're gonna set the memory to 2048 or two gigs. We're gonna name this Ubuntu Cloud. I'm gonna set the networking to use the vert IO driver, and we're gonna set it to bridge mode, and I'm telling it to use the interface VMBR0. And don't worry, all of these commands will be in the documentation, and you can find that in the description, so you can just copy and paste all this. So we've created that VM, and we can actually see it in Proxmox here, but we're not done yet, so let's go back to the terminal. The next command we're gonna run is a QM import disk, and then the ID of this machine, and then pointing to the cloud image that we downloaded right here, and then we're telling it local LVM. So this is where we're going to put it. So this is saying, import the disk on this ID, use this image, and then place it in local LVM. Now you don't have to put it in local LVM, you can put it anywhere you want. For example, I'm gonna put mine in Fast10. And this maps to one of your storage devices that are attached to that server. So I'm gonna upload mine here. And there we go, so it uploaded that image. And the next command we're going to use, this is the last one, hang in there, is QM set 8000. And then we're going to set SCSI hardware, for IO SCSI PCI, and then SCSI zero to local LVM and to that disk we just uploaded. So this is configuring that virtual machine. We're adding a SCSI controller, and then we're adding a SCSI drive and attaching the disk that we just uploaded. And again, if you put yours somewhere else, like I did, it will be in that device that you specified earlier. Okay, so I ran the command and it attached. Just be sure that your disk number matches the one that you uploaded previously in the previous command. If you get an error, you might wanna to check to make sure it's disk zero or disk one. It should have been echoed out in the previous command before we ran this and use that one to attach it. Anyways, now that we have this working, we should be able to go into here and see our Ubuntu cloud machine. And if we look at the devices that are attached, we can see here we have our SCSI controller and our SCSI disk that we specified earlier. So real quick, we have this Ubuntu virtual machine that can boot up now and look for the cloud init drive. We haven't configured that cloud init drive, but that cloud init drive will supply networking information as well as our SSH keys. So we need to configure a cloud init drive and attach it to this virtual machine. So let's go back to the terminal really quick and let's run this command right here. QM set 8000, the ID of our machine, and then we're passing in a flag of IDE2, and then we're pointing it to a cloud init drive. And all this is doing is creating a virtual CD-ROM and attaching it to this virtual machine. So I have mine on a different drive. Let's run that. So now it created that logical volume for cloud init. Next, we'll run this command, qmset8000-boot-c-boot-disk, 
SCSI 0. And this is so we can boot from this cloud init drive directly. And it will also speed up boot times. The next thing we're going to do is enable a serial console. Now, this might not make sense because we'll end up SSHing into it. But for the web VNC part, if you want to be able to see the output, we need to configure this serial so we can actually see the terminal itself. And this is the way that most cloud vendors have their images configured. So we'll need to turn this on. Okay, so now we can go back to the GUI. And if we go into cloud init, we now see we have a cloud init drive configured. So awesome. Now we can initialize virtual machines with these values when it boots up for the first time. So if we wanted to set a user of server admin and a password, we could. We can also configure DNS settings. We can configure DNS domains and DNS servers, or just tell it to use the host. We can also configure SSH keys, which is really cool because now we can SSH directly into this machine without having to add our keys first. And here you wanna paste your public SSH key. And we can also configure our network settings. So if you didn't wanna configure DHCP, you can configure a static one here. You could set your IP address, the gateway, or do that same thing in IPv6, but we'll use DHCP. Now this caught me up for a minute, but the default value is static of nothing. So if you don't set anything, you're not gonna have any network access at all. This tripped me up for a minute. So at bare minimum, set it to DHCP and hit okay. So a word of caution, once you create this template, you don't wanna start it up. The reason is, is because if you start that machine, you'll bootstrap that machine with a machine ID and a UUID. And if that happens, you'll end up with the same machine config across all your templates. So don't start it up. If you did, there are ways to reset it, but I would highly recommend just recreating it and start with a good state. So now that we have a cloud image with cloud init, we should create a template from this. So to create a template, we can right click and convert to template. But before we do, I know you're probably asking, well, why didn't you install the QEMU guest agent or any other tool? Well, I've run into issues before where I install the guest agent and then create clones from it. But rather than bake those things into this image, I end up automating it with Ansible later. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So I'm gonna keep this base image as clean as possible. Now, don't get me wrong, we can configure some hardware. So if you wanted to say, hey, my base image will always have four processors and it will always have four gigs of RAM, that's totally fine. And arguably, you could install some tools on this machine ahead of time. But again, I like to keep mine as clean as possible so that I don't have to undo anything in the future or fix or correct if something goes wrong. So for me, this is my perfect base Ubuntu cloud init image. Four gigs of RAM, four cores, and cloud init already configured on this. So now we can right click and convert to template. And this is a one way ticket. There's no going back after you do this, but you saw how easy it was to spin this up if something goes wrong. So let's convert it to a template. And now you can see it has a slightly different icon. So now from here, we can actually clone this machine. And when we clone this machine, we get options to create this clone from that base image. So for the name of the first one, I'm gonna name it Yoshi. Then we can choose our resource pool. We can set a VM ID and even our target node if it's clustered. I'm not gonna to touch any of that. But what you'll wanna pay attention to is the mode. Now we have linked clone and full clone. Now linked clone is always going to keep a reference back to this image, which is nice because you save a little bit of space. But then you're always bound to this image. You can't clean up this image. You can't do anything to this image without deleting everyone who depends on it. So typically I like to choose full clone. Now we'll set our target source. And for me, that's that fast directory, but feel free to choose local LVM or any other place you store your virtual machines. And then we can hit clone. So we've created Yoshi and we can start up Yoshi. And while that's starting up, let's create another one. So let's create another clone. Let's name this one Bowser. And we're gonna choose a full clone again. And we're gonna choose the storage it belongs to. Mine again is fast. So clone this one. So while that's cloning, let's check on Yoshi. So Yoshi is booted up. We can log in using that account we created. We can see we have an IP address and we can see our host name is Yoshi. Let's do the same thing for Bowser. See how happy he is. He's usually not happy in general. Bowser's not a happy person. But this virtual machine of Bowser, he's gonna be pretty happy. Okay, now with Bowser up and running, we should be able to remote into this machine and we should be able to run an IPA and we can see we have an IP address of 192.168.0.204. So that's a good sign, a different IP address than Yoshi. And we can SSH into this machine. As I mentioned before, we'll need to accept this and get right in. 
And you can see that this is that Yoshi machine. So we can SSH in using CloudInit and the key we provided. Now, as I mentioned before, when creating the template, if you're seeing multiple machines with the same IP address, that means that your machine ID or your UUID is the same across those machines. And so they're getting the same IP address because they have the same identity and to your DHCP server, they look the same. And if you're getting stuck there, I'll leave some links in the documentation on how you can fix that because you may want to boot up that base image to do some additional maintenance and then shut it back down. And so you'll have to run some commands before you shut it back down to remove the machine ID and UUID. So each new machine is unique. So what do I think about cloud images and cloud init? I think they're awesome. They're really small. They're really optimized for a cloud environment. And everyone that's running in a cloud environment wants something super secure, super optimized, and super small. And they also want it to boot really fast. So I want all of those qualities of a cloud image for my base images for my own machine. And cloud init saves a lot of tweaking and configuration of your base image after you've deployed it. Before cloud init, I've had all kinds of cleanup scripts I've had to run to each machine either manually or with Ansible. So what do you think of cloud images and cloud init and templates? Do you already use them or do you just clone another base image you already have? Let me know in the comments section below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, 3.6 minutes, he's bragging, geeky rand. Uh, nah, not bragging, not bragging, a little bit. Uh, it's a humble brag. No, it's, uh, it's not, I, I'm amazed, I, I don't wanna, don't want to say like, yeah, I, I spun up a whole entire, you know, bare metal, uh, you know, Kubernetes cluster in 3.6 minutes, but it kind of did. <laughs>